Synth Festival, uh, the opening night concert on the 23rd, and you're sticking around for the weekend. Um, yeah, I'll be there. I think I'm there pretty much through the whole weekend on Saturday and Sunday. I, I do the performance on the Friday night, and then I think I'm doing a, a, a guest talk on the Saturday and a performance on the Sunday afternoon as well. So if you, you know, if you hadn't had enough of my nasally voice, I'm sure you will after, you know, the synth festival. Right. My rig for Melbourne Music Week will be something along the lines of, of this, you know, a modular synth, a 303, a drum machine of sorts, maybe the booklet easel, maybe a, a performance sampler. I don't know until I, till the night before really. Depends how I feel. Depends if, you know, the food's agreed with me or not. Depends how much coffee I've had, you know. It's based on my emotional state. That's cool. What are you up to currently, um, recording lives and been doing some performances? Um, oh, well, I'm always performing. I'm always recording. Uh, I've got a number of different projects on all at the same time. <laughs> Because I don't, I don't craft, I don't craft my music as someone. Well, I'm generalising now. As someone would on say, you know, a DAW. You know, mine is plug everything in, and just start recording the audio. And if there's a section of three to five or ten minutes that is valuable, then that's the track. You know, can I replicate it live? Not at all. Am I interested? Not at all. Am I interested in making DJ music? Not at all. You know, so it's kind of I, I occupy uh, a unique space because I'm making dance music, but I'm not making music for DJs. It's there's no formularized, um, you know, approach to how I make something. It really is a what I call a machine-led aesthetic. I allow the machines to kind of um, lead the way. Sure, I'm the one who's making the choices as to what to hook up. And you know I'm, you know, uh, manipulating certain sounds or sequences uh, in real time, but you know, it's about the limitation of the machines and uh, the series of machines that I use as well. Uh, any bucket list projects in your mind that you want to get to at some point? Well, I've got to buy more gear, you know, and I've got to buy more modular gear. So. <laughs> There's always something I've got, you know, my studio is full of kind of post-it notes as to what I should pair something with. Or, um, so I'm always, oh shit, I should pair those machines and try that out. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of options here. I always, uh, as I was saying earlier, I'm never happy with the configuration of my studio. And that's because each new configuration brings new sounds and you know uh, new outcomes so that's why it's really important that um, I'm always reconfiguring the studio I'm all, always reconfiguring my instrument and that's why I'm so you know on a serious note that's why I'm always interested in what new gear brings is because ah what will this contribute to you know a composition or to a performance so that's why I'm always eager to hear you know, I'm older and wiser and don't always run to buy something straight away. But uh, yeah, I think uh, these, are, these are amazing times because this gear wasn't available and wasn't you know, affordable 20 odd years ago. And it's now amazing that, that you, know, you have people, you know, similar backgrounds to me, they're not trained musicians and they can buy you know, one or two pieces of gear or like I said, software, they can start making something, you know. And I think what we find as musicians or as composers is that the music that that uh, appeals to us, you know, when we find out how it's been made, it really is quite simple. It's not complex. I think it's the whole, you know, it's the whole culture of, you know, marketing these products where these companies say, look, you can do everything, you make a cappuccino, what have you, and you think, yeah, I really need to make a cappuccino whilst I'm making, you know, a banging acid track, you know, so, but no, you don't, you know, because if you go back to uh, the gear that has become, you know, the, the, the electric, you know, the electric guitars of dance music, you find like, you know, they're really quite rudimentary, uh, really simple to program, 
you know. So yeah. Dave Abbeyfield, thanks for your time. No, thank you. Thank you.